I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 11th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, all right, so this is gonna be a weird topic, but it came up like yesterday's video. We had a response to Scott Moore's video, and one of the things he mentioned in there that we didn't respond to yesterday was about people urinating in public. Okay, I know, weird topic, but stick with me. It's gonna be interesting, at least a little bit, and not gross, I hope. Um, but, and then some people, Patricia especially, said, oh yeah, that's terrible. Like, I, that's such a, a problem uh, for her in Nicaragua. And I think this deserves a little bit of conversation. Plus it was asked why I didn't address it, mostly because I forgot. So sorry about that, but he gave me a topic for today and I'm on a tight schedule to get the video out today. We've got a lot going on. So we're gonna be talking about that, why it's like this in Nicaragua, what the future is gonna look like, and explaining a bit of the cultural and reasons behind these differences uh, between North America and Central America. So we're gonna to get to that right after the bump. All right, before we dive into the topic today, I just want to point out we are on the Fuji XS20 today. We are on the Fujinon 18 to 55 lens. We're at 18 millimeters and we're letting the camera do its thing. We're on nostalgic neg and this is what it looks like. We're testing out a bunch of different things. I lowered the bitrate to 50 megabits per second to see if it would still look fantastic, which I think it will, and uh, how that will affect run times and recording and all that and make it easier to edit and all that. So we're just playing around with a few things. I'm just partially putting this in for myself and for Valentina so we can track what's going on, but a few of you have found this interesting, so that's where we are today. All right, so. What is the, the general topic? So the general topic is, um, for those who don't know, which would be very few, in the US and Canada, uh, the idea of urinating in public is absolutely abhorrent. It is illegal, um, at least in the United States. I don't know the actual laws in Canada, but it at least socially follows the US. But in the US, it is highly illegal, and no matter what amount of emergency you have, you could be arrested for doing this. You may not be likely to be arrested if it's truly an emergency and you're in the middle of nowhere and you're trying to be discreet. Like, generally, you don't get in trouble for that, but you certainly certainly can and very recently this is very prescient right in the last two months a 10 year old child was in a situation in the United States where they needed to use a bathroom there was a sign that no bathrooms were available and they used uh, a public parking lot to discreetly go to the bathroom somewhere and the police arrested them so this is a child who was needed a bathroom and was not provided with facilities to do so what were they supposed to do, right? Even peeing your pants is technically illegal in most cases. So this is a difficult situation. The idea is that we want to avoid people urinating in public because it's gross, it's weird, it's, uh, it's unpleasant. But it's important to note that the United States is just about the only major country in the world where this is so strongly felt. Most countries are like, yeah, we'd rather people didn't do that, but you need to sometimes, and it's really hard to make a law that, that handles this in a healthy way because the US failed completely and it's very difficult to supply the necessary facilities to keep this from ever being a problem and sometimes there's just things you can't do. I long ago was once driving through northern New Jersey which if you've never done gets pretty remote but it's still New Jersey it's still like part of the city metro right and I was with a girl who was from South America right and we broke down the car actually blew an engine and a brand new one, right? It was a terrible situation with Chevy. They ended up doing a recall and uh, it was not that we had mistreated it. They actually shipped bad engines, but the engine blew on us in Northern New Jersey. We were in the middle of nowhere. We couldn't get police. We couldn't get taxi. We couldn't get help of any sort. There was no cell service. There was no nothing. We're on the side of a highway though. We're on a uh, US federal highway and there were no bathroom facilities. There was no anything, right? There was no buildings, no cars, no people. And she really had to use the bathroom and there was an edge of the highway and darkness and she was able to just go and because she was from South America, she was like, this is not a problem. I know exactly what to do. Had no issue with it whatsoever and it was a very simple situation. However, had a police car come by during that time, they could absolutely have arrested her for something that she had no way to control, right? That was a situation that highlighted to me long ago just how wrong these laws are, how dumb they are. Why would we have such a law? So this provides a little bit of a background, right? The US specifically has a toxicity about normal human behavior. And it's really important to understand this. And it's not that it's so horrible, like, oh gosh, we like everyone to be covered up. We like people not to urinate in public. Well, that's kind of actually sort of nice, but it creates dangerous situations that are edge cases that we shouldn't have to worry about. We shouldn't be afraid of clothing malfunctions. We shouldn't be afraid of needing 
choosing to use the bathroom and one not being provided for us. We shouldn't make open highways technically illegal because if you're taking a risk that you might have to use a bathroom and there isn't one for a certain distance, isn't taking that risk kind of just inherently illegal then? Is driving illegal because there's no bathroom in your car? It's a weird situation. Should you never go out in public because what if you have an emergency, right? It makes everything odd. It makes every decision to go out a risk assessment. Well, there's a 99.999% chance I can make it to the next place I need to go that has a bathroom. I'll be fine. And only one out of 10,000 trips, well, I have to do something that technically is illegal and I'll just hope I don't get caught. And if I do, well, it's not that big of a fine. It doesn't happen that often, but you're always rolling the dice. That should never be how it works. So outside the US, most of the world has a much more flexible and robust system for dealing with these things. And a lot of it is just practical. So here in Central America, especially, right? One, it is a very different relationship with humanity. We don't care that people are naked. People aren't naked very often. That's not normal. But if they are, it's not a big deal. And where people say things like, oh, what if someone saw something? They don't care because that's an American thing, right? pretty much only in the US are uh, all people fearful of seeing other people as if that's a terrible thing, right? That's, it, it's hard to describe how much that is uniquely an American emotional reaction to that, right? It's very unique, very different. So in the rest of the world, they don't see that as a problem. So the whole like, well, what if they're like, but what if, who cares, right? So, because everyone uses a bathroom. Why is it okay to go into a, a public restroom and see other people urinating, but it is not okay to see it in public. It's all the same people, all the same things. It's just in one case, we're acting like that's where you're supposed to do it. In one case, we're acting like it's not. It's a very bizarre thing. Very few people ever go through a week without seeing other people using a bathroom somewhere, right? And the only happens if you never leave your house. And again, Americans have a tendency towards not leaving their house. So that actually isolates them more in those situations. Whereas, as when you uh, live in like Central America, you're out using public bathrooms so often that that's just normal. The idea that you need to go into a private room. Often the bathrooms have no doors, right? It's easy if you're walking through a restaurant to peer into a bathroom and see some, you know, people in there, right? Nobody cares because it's, it's not this, you know, you can get away from people. It's not like this scary thing where oh, I'm always being watched. It's not like that. But if you are, are not concerned about being seen, people aren't concerned about seeing you. Like it just, it just is much simpler, right? It's much more practical. It's much more just organic. Um, and so here in Central America, one of the things like most of the world, we don't have public bathrooms everywhere. The United States, because of these things, and this is not a bad thing, this is a great result of a bad law, has put in public bathrooms everywhere. You, restaurants must provide them. Gas stations almost must provide them. They basically always do. Uh, truck stops are everywhere. Everything in American society is built around providing really nice, mostly, free bathrooms that are, are available to the public. Like, it's really hard to travel in the United States and actually get to a point where you can't reasonably get to a bathroom. Of course, it happened to me in New Jersey. I've done a lot of travel across the US. I've had many situations where I couldn't get to a bathroom over the years. I travel a lot, so it comes up more than most people. But in general, it's relatively difficult to have that happen. Bathrooms are incredibly available. And for some reason, America's managed to make them incredibly clean and accessible most of the time, always an exception. But that the whole bathroom thing, the whole world, is jealous of American bathrooms. They're jealous of how well they work. They're jealous of how clean they are. They're jealous of how free they are. They're jealous of how available, like how many there are and how you can always get to it, how publicly accessible they are and um, how, how uniform they are, um, which we've talked about in other episodes, but American bathrooms are surprisingly uniform compared to the rest of the world. It's just, it's something you don't think about until you explore the world and realize that the world mostly has a big variation in everything in a bathroom that the US doesn't have. And that's not a good thing, right? Like, I mean, there's benefits to it, but they are not offset by the, the you know, uniform quality of American bathrooms. So certainly America has created great results out of this bad situation. Now, there's ways that that, you know, you can look at that a lot of ways, but in general, the overall result is bad very high cost, very high effort to solve a problem that shouldn't exist in the first place. But it's nice that it's there. And certainly as an American traveling in the US, the moment I'm on the road, I'm like, oh, I know there's gonna be rest stops. I know there's gonna be gas stations. I know there's gonna be restaurants. There's so many options. It's great. Although with the pandemic, so many things started closing earlier that a lot of those options have gone away and it is not as good as it was just five years ago. 
So here in Nicaragua, so sorry, I had to change everything with the camera set up because uh, we had to run out and I spent the entire day in Managua. So I've had to make quite a change. It's quite a bit later, the dog's running around. So I'm here in the office recording at night. So here in Nicaragua, we don't have public restrooms everywhere. This is completely different than in the United States. So you have to understand that public restrooms essentially don't exist here. It's not like there's few and far between. There's basically none. It's not something you can count on. It's not something you know how to use. It's not something you know how to look for. There's no rest stops. There's no public restrooms in the cities. The cities aren't built around that. And also remember that the major tourist centers like Granada and Leon are colonial. So they don't have the space to put in public restrooms. I'm not saying there's no way to do it, but it's very difficult. It's not like in the United States or a lot of countries where you have a lot of space where you could just pop one in. Now, to be fair, Managua has lots of space where they could pop one in and that would work just fine because Managua has, you know, a lot of empty space, a lot of sprawling space, a lot of new construction. It's not colonial. So a lot of reasons why Managua would be able to pull that off. But in much of the country, especially the touristy parts, you cannot, or it'd be a big challenge. And also, like at the beaches, you have the challenge that there's not the plumbing infrastructure for that. And so all of the bathrooms are limited to businesses that are paying for the septic and everything has to be pumped out on a regular basis, which is just how it is anywhere when you have uh, uh, places with septic right on the water. Uh, but it, that's a challenge that a lot of businesses have. Um, and so a lot of the things that are done in the United States are very difficult or impossible to do. In Nicaragua, you have to accommodate that it's a very different place. Well, let's lock, talk about the lack of public restrooms because this really changes everything, right? If you, you want to have a stigma you want to have a culture of not using the public space for bathrooms. That's fantastic. Like, that would be great. I would love if people weren't using the bathroom outside. But you have to give them an alternative first. You can't create the stigma and then not give them a place to go because that creates social problems. It creates potentially medical problems. It creates potentially legal problems. And it doesn't stop people from going outside. Now, while we were talking about this, I went and looked up a couple of resources about this. And, and immediately, both the U.S. and U.K. came up as places that have major problems with this, way, way, according to the articles, more dramatic than uh, anywhere in Nicaragua, right? Specifically, New York City and London came up as places with major problems with this. And these are places that have public restrooms. These are places where it is illegal. This is places where there is a stigma. And the degree to which they're describing the problems is so far beyond Nicaragua. And what they said was, basically, they would have, anytime there were neighborhoods, that lacked sufficient public restrooms, it would immediately turn into this. And here in Nicaragua, there's like every neighborhood lacks all public restrooms with the rarest of exception. And it's only a minor thing that you really don't see that much. Like I know that it seems like when we're talking about it, that it's like, oh, you must be seeing it all the time. I've easily gone a month without seeing someone uh, do that. And like, I just spent the entire day in Managua. I'm in Leon all the time. Like I'm in different cities. Like if it was happening in, in one place and not another, I'd most likely see it unless it's really isolated. I mean, for sure, it happens everywhere, right? I, but mostly it's on the highway between places. It's, it's where there's large stretches uh, without anything. And so that brings up an important point that, for example, in the United States, how is that dealt with? Well, primarily rest stops on highways and, and gas stations with mini marts that have a little bit of, you know, fast food or they offer some pizza or nachos or something, or at least snacks, and they have a bathroom. Not all. When I was a kid, bathrooms basically didn't exist in gas stations. That was extremely rare. That they exist now is a new thing. And they've kind of realized that people are driving farther distances. Gas stations have an opportunity to draw people in over a larger set of uh, situations. And bathrooms being available in gas stations has become a draw to help sell snacks. They didn't sell snacks when I was a little kid either, or very little. right? So that has changed. That's a new thing in the US. Well, it's the same here. In 2015, when I lived in Nicaragua, we didn't have gas stations that had mini marts. They only sold gas and they were owned by companies that didn't have mini marts. Today, that has changed completely, but it's really recent to the point where I just did a video about the new Super 7 mini marts that are going in in Managua right now. Like as we travel from Leon to, to uh, Managua, we normally pass three or four new Super 7s, which are really nice mini marts with bathrooms and all kinds of stuff in Managua. And we pass about three new Prontos, which are roughly the equivalent uh, of a different chain on the way in places like Nagarote and La Paz Centro. 
And so what used to be a trip that had very little gas and absolutely no bathrooms now suddenly has several. And that has changed things a lot. In fact, I can honestly say before those went in, I saw people using the side of the road from time to time. Since they've gone in, I am relatively confident I've never seen it once. We now have access to bathrooms where we never had them before, and things have noticeably changed. That needs to happen all over. Now, in this case, those are private businesses that are coming in. Those are not public rest stops, but they happen to be 24-hour businesses that have a strong interest in drawing people in and providing them bathrooms is a moneymaker for them, not because they charge for the bathroom, but because they know they're going to get your business for the fuel, or more importantly, they're going to get your business for the food. And Super 7 especially has gone out of their way and become a major destination for food. And if you pay attention to like my video on the Super 7, they are packed. So they have to provide restrooms because they're a busy restaurant, like a really busy restaurant. Um, so the fact that they're also on the way places and you can visit them on the road, just a bonus, right? So that kind of stuff is changing and they're taking a cue from the US and they're learning business models that leverage making bathrooms available uh, to make that possible. So we're seeing a change, right? And this is fantastic. And now there's opportunities to, to get to a bathroom in those particular instances. And what we still don't have one, there's no mini mark. Right, nothing, gas station or mini mart, on the way to the beaches in Leon. Same thing in uh, Carrasso. Uh, same thing in Managua. Right, huge areas where you're going hours on the road and there are no stops. You may be able to find a roadside spot. Most of those spots. Okay, so the other thing that came up is, well, what about all the restaurants and businesses that are all over? They must have bathrooms. So they don't, right? This is an important thing to understand about Nicaragua. Of course, if you go to a McDonald's, they're going to have a bathroom. If you're going to go to a major restaurant, like a chain or a really big popular place, they're going to have a bathroom. Now, the first thing is, will that be open to the public? Not likely, right? It is not a thing to make bathrooms available to the public and in the US, they only do that because they've made it a law and only in certain circumstances, right? There's a lot of times where bathrooms are not public in the US, hence the issue with the 10 year old getting into trouble because there were no public bathrooms where he was, even though he was a customer of the space he was in. Here, it is less common for a number of reasons. One, there are fewer legal mandates for it, but also the a lot of businesses, a lot, a majority, this is important, a majority of businesses in Nicaragua are family run businesses out of the home, right? So that means that everybody who's employed there, if there's an employee, it, typically there's none, right? It's just the family, but whoever there is, is family and no empl no employees outside of that, possibly none. And if they have a bathroom, it is their bathroom in their house. And if someone was to go to their business, whether it's food or a shop or whatever, and need to use the bathroom, you're talking about asking a family to allow a stranger into their homes to use their personal bathroom and very likely their only bathroom. Right? These are very unlikely to be homes that have two or three bathrooms. It's like, well, we have one for guests and we kind of use it for our customers. We have to, no, you're talking about literally letting people just into your home, maybe into your bedroom and letting them use your bathroom um, in, in a very private space where you need to protect your, your possessions and stuff. Like it's a very awkward thing and very difficult. A lot of restaurants and shops don't let you inside at all. They have bars and they serve you through a window, right? Because it's their home and they don't, they just take a front room and convert it to a place to serve food or to sell chips or soda or ice or whatever. So you have to think of that tons and tons of the businesses that you see do not have facilities for a bathroom already, or if they do, it's their family bathroom. So providing that to the public would be very problematic and you couldn't just wander in. Also, the majority of businesses are not open late at night. And the same thing is true in the United States. The difference in the United States is you typically are driving long distances between things. And so passing something that's open is much more likely. Here, for example, and this is a good example, I think, if I go to the bar, any normal bar, I could pick one that is closer, but any normal bar that I'm likely to go to, any of the ones that we naturally go to, and I want to go home, and this is something I typically do, I always go home, but if I want to go home on foot, which I often do, I walk for 45 minutes and there are no bathrooms. There's no restaurant, there's no gas station, there's no store. There is nothing that is open. It's not that there's, there's family run things and they're not gonna let me use their bathroom. There is nothing that is open for a very long way crossing the majority of a city 
at night when a bar would close. And typically, when you're talking about inner city or, or city urination issues, it is most likely to be associated with bars and late traffic after people have been drinking and when they're traveling between things, on their way to something, whatever. Now, if you're just moving from bar to bar, you're bar hopping, that's probably fine. You can go at one bar and go to the next. You don't need to go in between. Although a lot of people find themselves needing to go in between. It's just kind of how it works, right? Break the seal, that's what happens. But uh, you could easily, likely, in fact, end up in a situation where if you walk anywhere, you are left without bathroom facilities. For me, I can generally go 45 minutes. No matter what's going on, no matter how much coffee I drank, no matter how much beer I drank, I can probably go 45 minutes without a problem. I can probably go two hours without a problem. But several members of my family most certainly cannot. And if they were to do that same walk, they would have to do something. They would be in an emergency state if they tried to go that far from a bar at night, which is probably not a wise thing to do anyway. But if they were to do that, they would be left without bathroom facilities. All right, so this is you have to address this first. And what happens is if you don't address it first, if you don't provide bathrooms and you try to make it stigmatized or, or whatever, you're going to end up with people saying, uh, well, they're, what are you supposed to do? And when someone then does it, people will start defending it with, well, what choice did they have? And then it becomes destigmatized naturally because there aren't other options and people start rationalizing it, which is how we got to where it is in the first place. So you really have to lead with creating the opportunities to not have to use the outside world, to not need to do those things. And then I think it naturally, as, as a, someone doing research on this said, when they talk to homeless people, when they talk to, you know, all these different groups, do you want to urinate outside? They're like, no, but I don't want to pay a bunch of money, spend hours trying to find a place, look and not find some place, go dramatically out of my way. Not Sometimes you don't know how to find it. Like, like, okay, maybe there's a public restroom, but if you don't know where how to encounter it, what are you gonna do, right? Wander around aimlessly, get lost, maybe end up in a dangerous neighborhood. That's not safe, right? At night, assuming a lot of these things are at night, the number of people doing it in broad daylight in the middle of the city, very low. Because at those times, there generally are bathrooms available and it's more awkward, right? A lot of times when people are doing it, it's in the dark and a you know, dark corner, they're trying to, they don't want to be exposed, they don't want to be seen, right? No one's doing it to show off. This is a bit of practicality. So that's a really important thing that needs to change physically before we can change it culturally. And then we could easily change it culturally, which it's not going to change that quickly and it's not going to change that dramatically for a number of reasons. One is that the government in most places, including the US, UK, much of Europe, doesn't prioritize putting in new bathrooms. If you look, tons of places removed them during the pandemic and decided not to put them back. And now urination problems are universal. It's no longer seen as a poor country thing or a Latin American thing. It is a universal thing. It's just that many countries had paid for public bathrooms previously and no longer do. And now instantly they've gone back to those problems, including the US. So that shows that the issue is just a universal lack of public bathrooms. Give people public bathrooms and they will almost always use them because that's way more comfortable. It's more sanitary, it's more convenient, it's safer, it's cleaner, it's nicer, it's, it's less weird, right? Everybody prefers that almost, right? There's always somebody who wants to go outside. Those are the people we want to stigmatize and convince them not to do it, but they're the outliers. They're not the majority. So solve the problem first. It's also worth noting, and I had no idea this was true. I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in New York. And the idea that someone would use bathrooms with the door open was absolutely crazy to me. I couldn't even imagine that such a thing would happen. I grew up in a world where even using public bathrooms was like, well, if you absolutely have to, but it needed to be an emergency, right? Like you just, public bathrooms were gross and holy cow, you want to avoid them, but they're still better than the outside, right? Um, but so coming from New York, moving to Texas and discovering that or, or just I moved away from New York and discovered that, you know, especially in Texas, that people would just urinate outside, even when they're in next to a building that has a bathroom inside of it. Right. Like I'd never heard of such a thing before, but it was not common, but I'd never seen it happen. And that people would use the bathroom and just leave the door open. Never saw such a thing until I got to Texas. And then it was like, really? Like this is weird and it still wasn't most people, but people would do it. I'd never heard of such a thing before. And the same with places that 
They had bathrooms that didn't have doors, just like a curtain. Like, are you kidding me? That's awful. And I'm talking about in a house, right? Like, ah, uh, I, I want a room with a solid steel door. I want loud music. I want the sound of water. I want fans running. I want no one to know what I'm doing in there. I want them to imagine that I went in there to read a book. And sometimes I do. But that's what I want them to imagine. I want them to have no idea of what's going on in the bathroom. I would really like it if there were multiple doors and layers so you didn't even know that someone had gone into a bathroom. They just went into a private space of the house that might have a bathroom. In fact, I love that in my house now. My bathroom is on the far side of my bedroom. So I go into my bedroom, I close my bedroom door because we keep that closed. And I have closets and, a, and a, the bedroom. And beyond that is the bathroom. And there's a shower in there. Maybe I'm showering. Maybe I'm brushing my teeth. Maybe I'm using the bathroom. That's an option, right? I like that no one knows. It's ambiguous, right? Like, so I totally get, I don't want to use a bathroom in public if I can help it. I don't want to use it in the open if I can help it. So I get those things, but it, it that's as a cultural thing, even in the US, a lot of the US leans in the same way. And here in Nicaragua, we have the same thing that there's a lot of bathrooms that don't have doors. That's actually common. They'll have a curtain or something, but very thin. Everyone can hear. A lot of times you have doors with slats, so you can, it's open air. Like you can hear absolutely everything. I hate that. Um, now that's, you're not going to get that typically in a nice hotel. Although from time to time, I stayed in a decent hotel in Guatemala. Same thing, just slats on the door, right? Like I'm like, oh, this is terrible. However, and this is worth telling the story the same day, same day as the story of the girl who had to pee off the side of the highway. We then had to get an emergency hotel in the Poconos. And the room that we got was a very expensive hotel room in the Poconos. And the room did not have a bathroom. It was a giant hotel room with a king bed and a toilet in the room. There was no curtains. There was no door. There was no wall. They made it completely using the toilet next to the bed. There was some distance between them. It was on tile instead of on carpet. Like there was a designated bathroom space. This was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It was the most disgusting hotel room I've ever been in, but it was a $150 a night. And this is, you know, long time ago. That was a lot of money. And it was supposed to be in this really nice area of the Poconos. It was supposed to be a decent hotel, not a fancy hotel, but it's supposed to be a like, this was not a little hole in the wall place. And they thought this was a good idea. I'd never, never have I seen that since. Crazy. But that stuff happens in the US. So if it's happening there, yeah, the same things are gonna happen here, right? So all things that are culturally weird for me, but getting used to it and learning that here, especially in Nicaragua, people really don't have these stigmas. They don't have this feeling that going to the bathroom is something secret or something pri super private. I mean, it's private, but it's not like you have to make people not know that it's happening or pretend it's not happening or anything like that. Like people are much more accepting that everyone has to share the facilities and everyone has to, you know, you're just, you're in closer quarters and, and all kinds of things are less private here, right? So uh, just because so many People are so much more poor. You can't afford to have houses with extra rooms. You can't generally afford to have an extra bathroom for every member of your family. A lot of people don't get private bedrooms. So uh, it's, it's just not a luxury that a lot of people can have. And that changes culture as well. So those are, those are really important things to understand about why it's the way that it is, why the culture is the way that it is. And it's really not a big deal. Now, I told, like I said, I totally get why, especially coming from America, that we have this feeling that it's absolutely awful and we just can't stand it. And we really hope that there's an alternative. And I hope that it improves. And I see it improving as like gas stations go in and, and people are like really rapidly going, wow, nice bathrooms at a gas station. That's fantastic compared to going on the side of the road. And people are taking advantage of that, right? And they're advertising it. They have signs. So you know how far, oh, two kilometers. I can wait two kilometers. That's like two minutes, right? Like, great. So things are changing, um, but it'll take time and you will notice it, right? And down here, we're, we're getting that stuff long before, like Matagalpa is, right? They're much farther out from the capital. They're much less traffic up there. So it's going to take time before those things start being noticeable in that area. Now, I also wanted to address, it said that it's, it's really disgusting. Honestly, it's not, right? That's the first thing is you kind of have to accept that Americans label it as disgusting, but that is something that we created artificially naturally humans don't particularly find that disgusting. If you were pooping in public, that's disgusting. And basically all people naturally are like, 
But when you're just peeing in public, people have to be taught that that's gross. It's not actually gross naturally. And the reason that we don't find it gross is because all these things, right? The way that humans find things disgusting is through evolution, right? We, we evolve to find things that are unhealthy, gross. And if, if you're around fecal matter, that causes the, the spread of disease, right? That's very unhealthy. That's why we have to have sewage systems. That's why we have drainage. That's why cities have to really carefully deal with, with human refuse, because if you're not careful, it's going to spread disease. But they never had to do that with urine, because urine is sterile. It is not a disease spreading uh, media. It is not something that you have to worry about uh, contact with in that way, right? There, there's, you don't want to have extra contact with it, but people do all the time, right? And it's worth noting, if you think it's disgusting and it's gross and it's unhygienic, which it's not hygienic, right? Then you actually would want pee, people peeing outside because if you ever went into a public restroom, especially in like a bar, that's how you're going to end up touching everything that everyone else touched and it's everywhere and there's no way to get clean because it's everywhere and it gets on your shoes and it gets on your hands and it gets on the sink and it gets on the door handles and it gets that's how that stuff would spread if it was an actual vector and it is only that it isn't that those things are not a major problem but the public urination actually reduces the exposure by, I would imagine, thousands of percentages. It's not like, well, it's a little bit. No, it's, it's like the degree to which that reduces the exposure is unbelievable. And the amount that it exposes stuff to fresh air, which would kill bacteria or whatever, is very high. So it's much better in many ways, um, as long as it's in reasonable places and not like through someone's letterbox, which is the problem they're having in the UK. That's a completely different thing. So it's important to note that we have this feeling, mostly in the United States, where they kind of push this feeling that it's for health reasons that you don't do that. But that's not actually true. It's against health reasons that we generally do it, but only a little bit. It's not a big deal either way. The point is that it's simply not a health risk. It's not unhygienic. And the US has a lot of stigmas like this. We had one in a video a few years ago where we showed someone making hamburgers here and they were doing it the global way, which is with bare hands. And someone, several people commented how disgusted they were that they weren't using gloves. And some people pointed out a few really important facts. One being that Globally, people don't use gloves for that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And two, studies show that gloves make the food less healthy and dirtier because, not because gloves themselves are bad, but because of the way that humans actually interact with gloves versus how they actually interact with their own skin. They make their skin clean much more often. They're, they do um, hand washing and are aware of what they've touched far more when it's their skin, when it's gloves, they will touch things that are potentially infectious, like something, a surface that may have salmonella on it, and think nothing of it, either because they don't remember having touched it, because their brain doesn't register it the way that it does with skin, or they know they've touched it, but it's too much effort to wash gloves, because you don't really wash them, you change them, uh, or they're not even aware that they touched it, because they don't have the sensory perception to know when they've brushed against the surface. And they're more likely to brush against the surface because they don't know exactly where their uh, gl the glove is compared to where their skin is. Their skin, they have natural sensory to detect how close they are to a surface. So the th very thing that everybody said is so disgusting actually was the thing that made the food cleaner. And there's no actual reason for, for needing gloves. The glove thing is just some random overbearing rule that the United States has. And it's not even a universal rule. Lots of the United States doesn't have it. It's local rules where somebody who didn't do their research got a stick up their butt about gloves, imagined that gloves were cleaner, and put out a rule. And maybe the rule says they have to change their gloves all the time, but that's not what they monitor. They monitor, do you have gloves? Because you can't look at a video and say, ah, they just changed their gloves. You don't know. All you know is they're wearing them or not wearing them. So we're perceiving the wrong things for hygiene because we've been trained on the wrong things for hygiene. In that particular case, this is similar to that. The public perception in the US is very different than the actual hygiene situation. So we shouldn't think of it as a hygiene thing. If anything, you should think of it as the public urination is better for hygiene, but not in a way that you should ever promote it because of that. We don't want to promote public urination. We just want to say when it's needed, 
it shouldn't be victimized. It shouldn't be villainized because when people need it, they really do need it. And it's important for people to have access to that. Even in the US, there is no country that has enough coverage of public restrooms that everyone can make it everywhere all the time. It was also mentioned, and this is worth, this is certainly worth pointing out, uh, that, well, if, if the women have to hold it, the men shouldn't get to urinate in public and the women don't get to, everyone should be, you know, equal on this. You know, the women have to hold it, so the men should too. That's the thing that's often left out when you're talking about it here in Nicaragua. Uh, at least in my experience, there are women peeing on the streets more often than men. That's probably not true that it is more often. Uh, definitely during the day, you're more likely to see men. At night, the women do it more in dark shadows. But if you're going from bar to bar at night, especially in a place where women drink a lot, just like the men, they tend to need to go more often. And so, but they put in more effort, generally hiding it. But if you pay attention, I think it's happening, we'll say equally, but it is certainly not a gendered issue here. In the United States, in the UK, it does seem to be. It is almost entirely men who are taking advantage of the incredible convenience of not being able to find a public restroom while moving between places. In those places, they're not going, we assume, as far or as complicated places as you typically go to in Nicaragua. But here, Everyone is stuck going really long distances or long periods of time with no options, not just inconvenient options. And so everyone is affected by this. And so pretty much equally, people have to avail themselves of what opportunities do exist. But definitely of people I have been with, when I'm driving down the highway, I am more likely to notice men. When I am with groups of people, it is almost exclusively women. That is a very anecdotal slice of life, right? But for what little bit of, of it, it is worth, that is my experience that we see the men doing it more often, but the women may actually be doing it more often. Um, so just something to think about, but it is definitely not just men doing it. Um, but uh, you know that is the that is the stigma that comes with it. So that is my thoughts on that. I think it's important to step back from the U.S. perspective and say, is that really right? Is it gross? No. Is it a problem? No, it's definitely not a problem. It's not negatively impacting anybody, right? I totally get that tourists who show up go, ooh, that's not something I like. And if you're looking to live somewhere, that's not something you like. But be aware, this is something that nearly every country in the world has. And they all have it slightly differently, but everyone has it to a relatively similar degree. It is not a Latin American thing. It is not a European thing. It is a global thing. And some places like the US definitely have stigmatized it more and have done more to provide public restrooms. But even there, you find people talking about the massive problems that they have in areas where those public restrooms don't exist, immediately the problem returns. So the US hasn't solved it in a, in a global way. It's simply solved it where those public restrooms are. We could do that anywhere if we just had the money to put in public restrooms. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support this channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller, which of course, all that caffeine will make me have to go find a public restroom, which hopefully I'll be able to find. And <laughs> that all that helps support the channel. And we really appreciate all of our donors who make this possible, the new camera gear and microphones and computers and all that stuff. And uh, if you would take a moment to share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow.